What's up guys, it's Bromley from Empire Barbell and this is Julius Maddox with an 800 pound bench press attempt. 100 pounds, unracked, the weight's on him, down to the chest, come on Julius, come on! Oh, oh it was coming up. So go ahead and click subscribe guys, uh, click the notification button, I put out multiple videos a week about a wide variety of subjects. Now I was absolutely blown away by how he handled this attempt, it flew off his chest so much faster than I thought it would. It looked better than the 790 attempt he took not that long ago. And I actually thought it was going up. It looks like, I usually don't credit Miss Bench Press attempts with Miss Grooves. It looks as if, if he brought the bar back a little bit, if he flared his elbows, brought it over his shoulders, uh, that it would have glided to lockout, especially with the speed it had. I don't know if that's a technique he normally employs. You know, you can't recommend technical fixes that are counter to how such an elite athlete has trained for so long. It, it, Often doesn't pan out exactly the way you might imagine it would, uh, but it looks like that that's that's what gassed out his arm. Uh, looked like his left arm just couldn't quite gas it to lock out, which was really tragic. It's when you consider just how dominant it looked, how much speed and power he put on it right off of his chest. Now, this came minutes after the bar was misloaded. I was watching the weight and the, the small 25 pound kilo plates. It wasn't quite as obvious. There were six on one side, five on the other side. He's unracking the bar. I think this is it. He looks at, oh my. This goodness. is it. He took it and it looked like it was almost gonna crush him in the face. And upon further investigation, somebody didn't put a plate on where they should have. Uh, that guy is going to be out of a spotting job because uh, there's no doubt that that played a role in his missed attempt. He came back. I would have taken 15 minutes. He came back like two or three minutes after that happened and then went for his 800-pound attempt, which is mind-boggling that he got as close as he did given that. So this was uh, a hell of a contest to watch. Johnny Harris up next. Here he goes. This is the lightest man to deadlift, 700 pounds plus. Here we go. Here Can we go, come on, come it. on, go on. Phenomenal, yes. phenomenal. 700 pounds. Absolutely 705 phenomenal. Five pounds. Yes. It's not often you see somebody go for that number, right? That that puts you into the next stratosphere, that first 600, that first 700. And he was razor thin. He fought for it and he got it. That was impressive as hell to watch. And I want to put special emphasis on him because the, the spotlight's on Julius because he's a, he tried doing something no other human being could do or could even thought was possible. And it it's, lead, it's leading us to get jaded because I want to demonstrate how far ahead of the pack Julius is, but I also want to give credit to the guys that are in that realm because the 705 bench is out of this world. I mean, there's for so long, there were only a couple guys that pushed it. And then by the time Spato came out, then Sarachev were in the sevens. I mean, there was a time you had five guys in history handled a 700 or higher. And then you have this guy come out clear 705 and he's not going to get the spotlight because you have this freak come out that just ruined the curve for everybody. Um, but that 705, he deserved it. That's still an impressive feat. When you look at the strongest pressers, Zadrunas was never capable of a 705. Eddie Hall was never capable of a 705. Your favorite strong pressers we're never capable of a 705 bench. I want you to put that in perspective when you think about how astronomically high these numbers are. I also want to highlight uh, the relation of this to like the big Thor controversy. This was more of a powerlifting meet. There were judges, there were other people there, but I want you to consider that nobody was watching this because they cared about who won the meet. People were watching this because they wanted to see a feat. They wanted to see a feat of strength. That is Julius Maddox take down 800 pounds people would have tuned in if he was by himself people would have tuned in if it was him and one other person with a 300 pound bench opener the point isn't that the competition fueled the impressiveness of what he was doing because he's not trying to beat anybody he's, he's so far ahead of everybody else he's just trying to beat himself the competition isn't what, ma what matters it's the feat and what that means for the history of strength sports so i want you to think about that when you spit that uh spit that venom towards thor and when you want to try and take credit away from some of these absolutely inhuman feats that people are, are, are setting up, as long as the lift is beyond reproach, as long as we know that the lift is what they said the lift was, nobody gives a shit about the contest. Because when you're setting a world record, you're not in anybody else's league anyways. You're so, you're so far above them. It's not about the competition. It's about hitting the goddamn number. So 
that's what I have to say about that. Uh, there's no doubt that Julius is going to clear that number. I mean, he looks so fucking good. I, I personally think that miss load attempt cost him. I, it was that razor thin that I think that mess up uh, uh, really either psychologically or physically affected him. But there's no doubt he's going to come back. 